Hey everybody, it's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this video is going to be my March book haul part one. I have bought about 11 books that I'm going to try to run through real quickly for you. As I talked about in my last video, I am currently trying to reach as read, read, reach, read as many of the Bailey's long list um, as I can. Turns out I'm not that fast of a reader <laughs> when it comes to putting a deadline on myself. So I am going as quickly as I can, but I have gotten a few more since we last talked, so I thought I would walk them through it. The first one that I'm going to talk to you about is Little Deaths by Emma Flint. Now, I'm not much of a mystery person, um, but this book, I just want to read you the first line, which I think makes it sound so intriguing. It's the summer of 1965 on the streets of Queens, New York. Shimmer in a heat wave. One July morning, Ruth Malone, a cocktail waitress, wakes to find a bedroom window open and our two young children missing. After a desperate search, the police make a horrifying discovery. I don't need to know much more about it. I think that that sounds really, really interesting. I also thought, I don't know much about this author, Emma Flint, but in the back it says, she has read true crime accounts developing an encyclopedia knowledge of real life murder cases. Kind of want to meet her, kind of don't. What do you think? So that's Little Deaths by Emma Flint, and it's on the Bailey's long list, and I'm going to try to get to it as soon as possible. The next one that I picked up is another big one. It's called The Sport of Kings by C.E. Morgan. I don't know a whole lot about this book um, other than it has a horse, and it indicates that it's about horse racing, but having spoken to Simon and also read his recent review, it's not about horse racing that much at all. It's a family drama. It kind of goes through everybody in the Shaughnessy? I want to say Shaughnessy family. And it follows them. It's got a lot of drama and a lot of intrigue. So if you're one for those big family dramas that follow a bunch of people, it sounds like The Sport of Kings is for you. Um, that's uh, by C.E. Morgan. I'm not a huge fan of this cover. I don't think it does it justice. I'm hoping it's much better than the cover, but I think the book sounds really good. That's a horrible way to hold it. There you go. <laughs> the next book I got, I'm really excited about, and I keep putting off because I'm so excited about. It's uh, The Lonely Hotel. The, I'm sorry, The Lonely Hearts Hotel. I'm going to try to get close because the cover is really pretty, but my lighting is not really letting you see it. So this is by Heather O'Neill, who I've started to follow on Twitter, and I kind of I have kind of a crush on her right now. She's great. Um, this book, from what I know, is set in the 1914s, early 1900s. It's about two babies that are left in an orphanage, and they turn out to be immensely talented. One's a pianist, I believe, and the other one is like a comedian and can kind of run a show. And they're put on tour, basically, to earn money for the orphanage that they live in. And along the way, they fall in love, and they decide they want to create their own show. And it's kind of, if what I can tell, I think it's a little bit body. So I'm kind of excited to see what she does with that. There's also a quote on the back from Kelly Link and Emily St. John Mandel. If you haven't read Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, you should definitely go do that right now. And Kelly Link wrote um, Get Get in Trouble, Get in Trouble, which is a fascinating kind of sci-fi fantasy short story collection that um, was one of the Pulitzer finalists last year, I think. Um, and I met her, and I've um, actually heard her speak, and she's great. But that gets way off topic from this book. This is The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. And I think it sounds really great. And it's up there on my next to read pretty, pretty soon. Um, the last two that I have from the Bailey's list. I actually love this cover. Isn't this a great cover? Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. Now, this book was shortlisted already for the Booker Prize last year. Um, I don't know a ton about it. I know that it's had rather mixed reviews, but I really like the line in the beginning that kind of hooks you. It says, in a single year, my father left us twice, the first to end his marriage and the second when he took his own life. I was 10 years old. I think that sounds really good. I think it's um, set in China, and that's all I really need to know about it. Um, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. So it's been shortlisted for the Booker, longlisted for the Baileys. So something to be said, right? Isn't that, that's a great cover. I keep saying that, but I really love it. 
Um, the last book from the Bailey's list that I have uh, to talk to you about is The Lesser Bohemians by Elmer McBride. I have to tell you, and I said Elmer, it's Eam. I don't know how to say her first name. I'm so sorry. Ms. McBride. Ms. McBride. Does that work? Um, I'm s scared of this book. So if you don't know, her book, A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing, won the Bailey's Prize a few years ago. I tried to read that book nine, ten times. I, she was just way too smart for me. And this book seems like it may be that too. But um, what I do know about it is it's the story of an 18-year-old girl who goes to London to become a star. I'm trying to get not the glare on it. Hopefully that does it for you. Um, to become like a theater star. She meets an older man who has a very checkered past. And as they start to get to know each other, their pasts come out and they kind of have to confront them. That's what I know about it. I think the story sounds fascinating. I just know her style is very, very um, avant-garde. So I'm a little worried about it, but I'm excited too to challenge myself. So that's The Lesser Bohemians by Emar McBride. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry. Um, that's the last of the Bailey's books that I have uh, purchased since we last talked. I have a couple more coming that I've pre-ordered or ordered from afar. So I'm waiting for them to arrive so that I can get them. The next um, books are just things that I picked up other than this one, which is The Impossible Fortress by Jason Rekulik. Now, as I told you guys in my last video, I'm gonna be going to Booktopia and Jason is actually gonna be one of the authors there. This book has been getting a lot of comparisons to Ready Player One in sort of style. I think it has an 80s sense of nostalgia to it. It's kind of cool if you see at the beginning of every chapter, if I can get that in, it kind of has this sort of old school computer type. It is about 14-year-old Billy Marvin. He's a nerd, but a decidedly happy nerd. Now, in 1987, I was a nerd and a decidedly happy nerd. So kind of fits right into what um, I was going through. Um, and it's about um, programming on his Condor 64 and basically a girl and the friends and meeting this girl and kind of how she changes their life. So I'm kind of excited. I love if I'm going to get in real close. Do you see this kind of digital 1980s cartoon girl? I kind of love that, and that was my face really close, so I apologize about that. Um, the next four books I got, there are these four. Oh, you know what? I told a total fib. This is also a Bailey's book, but it's out in paperback already here. And this one I'm ecstatic about, The ne the Woman Next Door, because it's about two old women, and I told you my thing about old women books. This is about two old women that are neighbors who hate and... Our friends so hate each other but our friends at the same time you know we all have those people in our life they live next door to each other something happens and they kind of have to come together and deal with something and it's kind of a test on that hate of hate of ship friendship thing that they have going on I think the covers really cute um, I think it's where is it said I can't even tell you to be the honest truth um, but I really um, I'm excited to read that one too it's a cute little book so um, this book I picked up, I was looking for, oh, I was picking up a Madeline Tian's book, and I want to say, someone I was talking to on my phone recommended that I also pick up The Incarnations by Susan Barker, and this book sounds really, really interesting. It's about a driver in Beijing, China, who all of a sudden starts getting these mysterious letters left in his car, so he thinks he has a stalker, um, but, and I think it's kind of the evolution of that whole idea. I don't really love the cover. God, I'm not feeling my covers today, but I think the story sounds fantastic. And um, Susan Barker is really well known, and it has a quote on it. I, I told you guys that I loved Adam Johnson's The Orphan Master's Son, and he is the kind of blurb on the front cover, so it has to be good. And that's uh, The Incarnations by uh, Susan Barker. So go pick that one up. I think it's gonna be really good. And I'm really excited about it. Keeping with my thing where I told you I like little small towns and uh, uh, old women. This is um, Notwithstanding Stories from an English Village by Louise de Bernese. You can say that however you want. 
Um, as the world around it marches forward, the bucolic English village of notwithstanding remains unchanged. It is, as it always has been, a place of pubs and cricket pitches where local eccentricities, a retired general has a, who has eschewed clothes, a spiritualist living with a ghost of her husband, and a dog named Archibald Scott Moncreff almost fit in. So I think that sounds really cute. Sounds like it's going to be a fun, easy read. I think the cover's kind of adorable. This reminds me of Charlotte's Web. <laughs> so that is uh, not, Notwithstanding Stories from an English Village. Lastly is a book that I picked up mainly because I thought it reminded me of Bride's Head Revisited by, um, what's his name, Wong, Wa, Wa. Um, and this book says that New Year's Eve, Dorset, England, 1946. Candles flicker, a gramophone scratches out a tune as guests dance and sip champagne. For one night, Hartgrove Hall relives better days. Harry Fox, Talbot, and his brother have returned from World War II, determined to save their once grand home from ruin. But the arrival of beautiful Jewish wartime singer Edie Rose tangles the threads of love and duty and leads to a devastating betrayal. Fifty years later, now a celebrated composer, Fox reels from the death of his adored wife, Edie, until his powerful connection with his four-year-old grandson, a piano prodigy, propels him back into life and ultimately leads him to confront his past. So I think that one sounds really good. That's called The Song of Hartgrove Hall by Natasha Solomons. So, that's it. Those are the books that I bought this month so far. I'm actually going to see an author speak this weekend and we'll be picking up some more. So I'll have quite a little stash for you guys next time. I hope some of those sound interesting and you pick them up. If you've read any, I want to know about it below. If any of them, if you buy any of them, please tell me about it. Um, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.